Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Infinity Train, episode 5. Uh, so yeah, our next Infinity Train reaction is here. It's been a while, been a couple weeks, but we're finally back, and I'm excited to get to more of this. Um, because this show has been really good so far, and honestly, I've been hearing good things going forward with the, I guess, recently released Season 3. Um, I don't know details or spoilers any by the way I just know that people are really really into it <laughs> um but yeah we're still on season one so we won't be there at, at season three for a while <laughs> but yeah so we're just continuing our journey to uh, continuing along the train trying to get to the conductor or uh the engine Something like that. Either way, I think both are valid. Um, she's picking up friends and allies along the way. And just, we're seeing the creativity and stuff come into fruition with this series. So yeah, not really much to say right now. Um, as I said before, we are doing these reactions based on the uh, videos I got. I got the entire rest of the series, by the way, uh, downloaded. Uh, or season, at least. Um, and, yeah, we're just going based on, like, which video has which episodes in it. This video has episode 5 specifically in it. The next has episode 6. And then the one after that has 7, 8. Uh, so, yeah. It's like some of them have one episode. Some of them have two. I don't know why, but, yeah. Um, so, I'm hoping that we continue this uh, fun and... Uh, creativity as we go and I assume we will I mean there is an overarching story but most of it seems to also have a lot of uh episodic stuff in it especially with the different train cars and stuff I'm wondering one big thing I'm wondering is if we're ever going to find out like what the deal with the infinity train is like where did it come from how is it the way it is all of that jazz. Maybe we'll find out that kind of information when we find out what the deal with Tulip's number is. The number on her hand. Um, maybe. I mean, I don't know. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, there's definitely a big mystery with this series that's going on. And I know some people would probably say that they don't want to know what's going on. That they'd rather have the Infinity Train and all uh, continue to be a mystery and have it be unexplained and everything. I disagree with that. I think that that kind of ideal is great for some stuff, but this is something I feel like... This is something I want explained. Even if it's something, like, dumb, like it's alien technology or some shit like that, it's like, I, that would be better than... Just not having it explained. This is something I feel like I really want to know what's going on here. Um, but yeah, yeah. Either way, uh, we're just going to get this started because, yeah, not really much to say going into it. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. So, we are back, and we will uh, begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Well, <laughs> I got gels. I don't know about you, but... Damn. Like, you go from just having good mystery, having good, uh, really good mature stuff in it, some great, uh, creativity, and then this episode happens. And it brings kind of all of that together 
in a huge way. So first off, we can find we find out that the train cars can switch places, which is really interesting. But beyond even that, the train car that comes in front of Tulip and uh, her crew is the train car of the cat, who we had met before. But this is her actual car now. And she, they go in, meet back up with her, and she clearly purposefully knocks down Tulip's tape, which brings Tulip into her memories. And here's where we get a lot, of mo a lot more depth into her life. And we see that she's actually had these false memories uh, in her mind this entire time. She's had this false perception of how things had gone down. And that's very natural, actually. Like, People don't realize how corruptible memories are. You can completely lie to yourself about something that happened, fully believe it, and that will be your memory for the rest of your life without even realizing what might have really happened. Because you've your brain has convinced itself that what happened is not what actually happened, you know what I mean? Like, this is a real thing that occurs. And I'm sure it's occurred with me. I'm sure not all my memories can be trusted. And, and I, I feel like that can be, the same can be said for almost anyone. And the thing is, you don't necessarily know what those false memories or modified memories in your brain are. And I like that this episode went with that. How she was going through these memories, thinking like, oh yeah, this is what happened. I, I remember this day. I love this day. And she did. She did remember it. And she did love those memories. But they were still false. And she had to come to realize that. Which is not as easy, obviously, in real life as it was shown to be here, but still. Um... So yeah, she had to realize her memories were false, such as the day at that, uh, that Sea World like place, instead of being like really fun and uh, uh, silly and just them having a great time, her parents were arguing the entire time. And honestly, the show wasn't that great either. Um, stuff like that. She saw the moment her parents told her about their uh, separation and everything as her parents like evilly almost telling her they're getting divorced and stuff and she saw it as like this horrifying thing when it was more complicated than that when it was much more simple and talked through and honestly tulip was the one kind of being um <sighs> rough about it let's put it that way and we see all these memories and how both how they how she at first saw them and then how they actually were. And I think the most emotional one out of them, like all of them are emotional, especially the uh, separation part with them telling her. But I think the one that actually really like hit as like, okay, this is real was the one with her father sleeping on the couch. Like, it's like you instantly know what that means. You instantly understand that. And the line about like, oh, you're the one tucking me in now, and then they hug and all, like that was emotional. It really dives in to the emotions of Tulip as a character and the turmoil she's going through in her mind. Not only because of her own uh, issues, but the issues of those around her that affect her. And not always in the most positive of ways. In fact, from what we're seeing, not really consistently in the most positive ways. Um, 
but she ends up getting out and it's revealed that the cat was trying to trap her in there and even tries to convince her to go back in. But Tulip at this point is angry and we've seen that this tends to be a coping mechanism of sorts for her that she when she when that she'll get angry and try to push things off instead of actually confronting them. So she does that here. She hides the number on her hand under a glove. She says she doesn't care anymore about all of the mysteries and stuff. She just wants to get off at this point. And we know she's lying. We know she she's not telling the truth here. We know it's all a coping mechanism to deal with the grief she's feeling again. And she and her crew leave with her just really needing to sit down and just take a breather, honestly. But that's not where it ends. Because we see the cat confronted by that weird robot monster that, again, reminds me of, uh, just design-wise, makes me think of a robotic uh, version of uh, the Face Stealer Co. from Avatar and Korra. Um, that confronts her and even attacks the cat. She, but then we also see that there's something else behind the monster. There's something else there, like pulling the strings. The cat convinces them to let her go, but things are not exactly the best at the moment. <laughs> it's clear that the cat's going to continue to be a recurring character. And it's also clear that these two, especially the one with the red uh, visor light kind of thing going on, that one is probably the main antagonist and maybe whoever is behind the Infinity Train. This monster is probably basically just a puppet. Like some kind of robot serving the true master of the infinity train. That's how I'm seeing it, at least. Um, but there's definitely, this brings up a lot more mysteries and a lot more questions. Um, so yeah, this is just wow. Like I said, it gave me chills because of how intense that last moment was and how huge it was for the lore and overall mysteries of this series. It really just, this series is going above and beyond. I don't know how season two and three are going to end up being, but season one at least is going above and beyond. And honestly, it's impressing me like in the way that a lot of other shows these days haven't been. It's already like far surpassed any of the other like big recent uh, shows that have started out like Owl House or Amphibia or anything like that. And it's just like, it, it wows me at how well this is made. So yeah, um, with that being said though, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Infinity Train. And thank you so much for continuing to tune in and support. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.